Okay, so let us start. Um, yeah, Alexander uh, Stamianov is talking today about Notscape and Not Tables. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, so this is now a, more or less a continuation of the previous lecture. I also announced some things in the first lecture which I didn't come to do, and I'm going to explain a little bit about them today. And uh, I think I start better first by kind of explaining a little bit expanded review of some basic things that I said last time. So we were considering knots, which I understood in a way suitable for computation as being diagrams modulo Reidemeister moves. Okay, so diagrams means plane curves with un over under crossing. Uh, and Reidemeister moves are these three type of local moves which are here drawn on the right. And uh, I also defined, I said, sometimes I want to distinguish orientation. So for example, when I have a trefoil, then I can run it in this way. And then I can also turn the orientation around and then draw it that way. And then uh, for notational purposes, if I say K is a knot with orientation, I write with minus K for the knot with the opposite orientation. Okay. This is one thing I can do, so I can reverse orientation. The other thing that I said I can do is I can take the mirror image. So mirror image means you, you turn the orientation of the ambient space around, or you can think of it by saying you turn all the crossings around in the diagram. So whenever this goes up here, now this goes down and the other strand goes up. So you do this of all crossings, then you get the, the mirror image. And my notation for this is with this exclamation mark. You must be careful in the literature, usually they put the exclamation mark as a superscript on the right of the knot, okay? But uh, since I sometimes like using C++, okay, you know, in C++, you can only overload operators according to their syntax. So uh, I can, I, I have to write this way. Okay. So this is why I write the, the, the mirror image with the exclamation mark in front. Um, and then I explained that there is this operation connected sum, which means I have two knots and then I can connect them by a band like this by taking out some piece from the one and from the other. And maybe I should say, if I consider oriented knots and I like to do it so that this is coherent with the orientation, okay? So this means uh, this should be this way and that way. And then I put the band and then the new orientation is this way and that way, okay? And this operation is called connected sum. And then I say, if you take connected sum with the, with the trivial knots so or with the unknot, then uh, this doesn't change. So K connected sum unknot is equal to K. And I didn't say this maybe clearly last time, but uh, I, I say this now. You can say the, the knot is prime whenever any connected sum of the knot, uh, connected sum representations in, one, in it, at least one of the knots is trivial. So uh, <coughs> this means there exists no two non-trivial knots where K is the connected sum of them. Okay. So, uh, and uh, every knot is the connected sum in a unique way up to permuting factors. So you see this, this operation is commutative. So K1 connected sum with K2 is K2 connected sum with K1. Okay. And uh, uh, so th this fact is a little bit like every integer is the, the product of prime numbers, which is uh, unique up to permuting the, the factor. So you can think a little bit of knots like, like integers and prime knots like prime numbers. <laughs> so, and now uh, I need this a few times. Uh, I consider diagrams which are obtained by this kind of construction. So wh what is a distinctive feature of this kind of diagram? Okay, it is, uh, there is a plane curve which intersects the diagram in two points and inside and outside. So I draw this here with, uh, with this kind of disc. Uh, the, this, in, there is some crossing at least in either of these discs. So this means what is in the disk is not simply a trivial arc, okay, without without crossings. Otherwise, I can I can make any diagram in this form. Okay. Uh, so this kind of diagram I call uh, I call a, a composite diagram, uh, and if it is not of this form, then I call it prime. Okay. So there should not be a decomposing curve which intersects the, the diagram in in two points, and inside and outside there is at least one crossing. Okay. So. <coughs> This is what is called a prime diagram. <coughs> uh, and I say that a crossing is reducible if it looks like this. 
So again, my convention is whenever I draw a disk with something, this means that there is something in the disk. These are, these are some arcs which enter the disk and exit the disk, and inside the disk can be anything, okay? Except that it should connect with the arcs which uh, which go go in and out properly. Okay. So and if you have a diagram which is of this sort, so I have two disks with one crossing this way, then uh, then I call this crossing reducible. And the reason I call this reducible is that there is an obvious way to deform it so that I can get a, a rid of this crossing. I mean, I can simply twist one of the disks by by 180 degrees, and then the crossing disappears. Of course, then let's say I twist the left disk, and this uh, I indicate it by this letter. This way, this means that I okay, this is this disk is now twisted. Okay, but the crossing has disappeared. So this kind of crossings always can 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 always be removed, and. Uh, <coughs> Okay, and the diagram is called reduced if there is no crossing of this type. So in this, uh, I should say, in this uh, in this setting, I am allowed to uh, put for p or q to be a trivial arc. So this is none. This is allowed in in that picture. This means so you have this you have this situation here. So something like this, what I create by a Rydermeister one move is a reducible crossing. And the diagram is called reduced if there is no such crossing. So <coughs> obviously, if the diagram is prime, then it is reduced, but the converse is false. So you can think about it. So <coughs> this is what is called a, a diagram, a reduced diagram. And what I defined last time was the crossing number. So what is the crossing number? I take all the diagrams of one not k and then uh, take the, their crossing numbers and the minimum of, of all these crossing numbers. So. <coughs> And I say that a diagram is minimal if it has the minimal crossing number among all the diagrams of the not k. So this means if the crossing number of the diagram is equal to the crossing number of uh, of uh, the uh, the not k. <coughs> Immediate observation is if you have something like this, this is never minimal, okay? because I can pre I can uh, there is a way to change the diagram without changing the knot so that it has one crossing less obviously this diagram has one crossing less than this one so reducible diagrams are never minimal okay. <coughs> uh, and then I also notice uh, notice this uh, made uh, okay, mention of this conjecture that the crossing number is additive uh, which is okay open for for a very long time so now uh, and then uh, I also uh, try to explain what is the goal of a knot table. So what is a knot table supposed to do? And, and basically the knot, a knot table is supposed to list by, by minimal diagrams uh, exactly one, one minimal diagram for each knot with a given crossing number. And uh, to, uh, to simplify things, <coughs> usually, one considers only prime knots. Okay, so knot tables usually con consider only prime knots. We do not like to have this kind of thing in the table. Okay, uh, I mean the crossing number behaves in this way expectedly. So somehow uh, it, one restricts oneself to prime knots. And also in most cases, one does not like to distinguish between a knot and its inverse and a knot and its mirror image. So knots are considered up to orientation and up to mirror images. <coughs> at least historically not tables were compiled this way uh, <coughs> so late, later when we talk about some specific knot in the table there are ways to find out now which of these are equivalent and which of these are not i will talk about that later but uh, in general when you want to compile a knot table you usually consider only prime knots and you do not like to distinguish orientation on the knot and weather and mirror images and the notation is something like this so standard weight of writing knots from the table is you have a, a big number, which is the number of crossings, and then a small index, which is the, the, the number in the table. So this means this is the second knot with five crossings in the table. Okay? The question how you order them is, okay, this is a, a separate story. I explained that there is a lot of uh, okay, chaos with, with, uh, with these orderings, but uh, okay, so let me not talk too much about this now. <coughs> the tabulation, so the, the making of these knot tables has a long history. It started around, I don't know, 140 years ago with Tate and then Little Kirkman, then continued by Conway, and then in more in more modern times by 
by uh, Hosty Thistlethwaite and some other people. Okay, uh, and this article of uh, Hosty Thistlethwaite and which in the Math Intelligence, of which I showed you the last talk, uh, it has a good account of the history of knot tabulation, which I do not want to talk about too much. So, uh, <coughs> okay, this is a topic for itself. So, uh, okay, <coughs> anyway, we have this table. And one important feature of knots which started okay, to, to get noticed already around 1880 when Tate made the first table uh, was that, uh, was this of an alternating diagram or not. So what does alternating mean? I didn't say this last time, but I need it many times uh, later. So let me explain. What does alternating mean? Alternating means for a diagram, if you start running along the, this loop, okay, you can always record whether you pass a crossing from above or from below. And alternating means that you alternatingly pass crossings above, below, above, below, above, below. Okay, and if you can do this through the entire loop and go back to the original point, and every time you only pass above, below, then uh, then this this diagram is called alternating. Okay, so for example, <coughs> you can have uh, okay the the trivial diagram of the anode is alternating, obviously because the the condition is trivial. Okay? You can have alternating diagrams of the anode. So for example, when you have one crossing and it is always alternating and similar, this is also alternating okay? because you simply check above, below, above, below. Okay? But these diagrams are reducible. Okay? So these are alternating reducible diagrams of the anode. The, uh, the example of the three crossing diagram of the trefoil is also alternating, but this is not reducible. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, I have a question. Also, yes. Is uh, being alternating a property specific to the diagram or intrinsic yes, so, to a loop? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I, okay. I will define in a minute. So you define this first for a diagram, okay? So you can, you can say that the, the property to be alternating is a property of the diagram. And you have examples of such diagrams, okay? And no, of course, not every diagram is alternating. So, for example, when you take this diagram, okay, then you you run here and you you pass above, and the next time you also pass above, or right, and here you pass below, and next time you also pass below. So this is not alternating. You can immediately see that this is a diagram of of that. Okay? You can simplify this by one crossing, and then you get that. So you have, of course, also non-alternating diagrams. And now the definition of the alternating knot or link is. You say a knot is alternating if it admits an alternating diagram. Okay, so it means am among all the diagrams, there is at least one which is alternating. Then you say that the knot is alternating. Okay. <laughs> and uh, the nice thing about these knots, uh, first, they occur very common in low crossing numbers. So for example, trefoil was alternating and some other uh, knots with fewer crossings, most of them are alternating. And also many problems in knot theory have been solved for alternating. So, for example, it is known, you, you see this, for example, here, if you take the trefoil, which has this alternating reduced diagram, I mean, without, without this kind of crossings, then obviously this is minimal crossing number. And this is now known in general. So this was proved. If you have a reduced alternating diagram, this means alternating without this kind of extra crossings, then it is minimal crossing number. It means the knot has not, no diagram with fewer crossings than that. Okay, so this 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 is how you can calculate the crossing number of an alternating knot. This is very easy. So then, uh, also the question whether a knot is prime or not has been resolved for alternating knots. And the the theorem is, if the knot is an alternating knot is prime, if and only if a reduced alternating diagram is prime. <laughs> this means uh, you can decide whether the knot is uh, a connected sum or not by looking at the alternating diagram. If the di alternating diagram is of this sort, then it's a connected sum. And if the alternating diagram is not of this sort, then it is not a connected sum. <laughs> this, was, this is a uh, famous theorem which was proved by Menasco. And also there is, uh, there is a kind of a classification theorem. You, you, can, you can decide for two alternating diagrams if they represent the same knot. Okay, so this was a basic, I mean, the kind of the most basic problem in, in knot theories. If you have two diagrams, do they represent the same knot or not? How to decide this? And for the alternating diagrams, the problem has been solved. 
Okay, this is this was a conjecture made by by Tate. Okay, already around that time, and then it was resolved about, about 110 years later okay, by Menasco and Tisotwet, which says if you have two alternating diagrams of the same knot, then they are interconvertible by a sequence of this move, which is called the flight. Okay. So usually, I mean, first I started uh, talking about moves between knot diagrams in terms of these three Reidemeister moves. But of course, you can compose more complicated moves from this Reidemeister move, and one of them is this, which is called the flight. Okay. And these moves, this now has the property that it doesn't change the crossing number. So it's like you have a disk with a half crossing on the left, and now you can you can put this half crossing on the right, but then you have to twist the disk. Okay. And in this disk, uh, this not I mean it is a ball in which there is some some piece of the diagram. Okay. And this move is called the flip, and it obviously you can very easily see that if the one diagram is alternating, the other one is also alternating. And the important fact is that if they represent the same knot, then there is a sequence of, of these flaps, which do so now you have a, a, a sequence of moves which do not augment a crossing number. This is the important difference to the Reidemeister move. Okay. And now uh, you can you can then you can then decide. Okay. <coughs> the one direction is obvious. Okay, the difficulty is of course the other direction. Okay, and this is okay. This was proved by Menasco Thistlethwaite some uh, some time ago. <coughs> Okay, uh, this was more or less uh, the, the preview. And now uh, I should say something about Notscape. So Notscape, I showed this briefly last time. It is, was developed in the 1990s by, by Hosti and Tisseltway. And there is a version of it uh, from 1999, which is available on uh, Thistlethwaite's uh, homepage. And it, pro, pro, it does several things, mostly it is an interface that provides access to tables of knots up to 16 crossings okay? and allows you to calculate some invariants. So to remind you what, what, why do we need invariant? Invariance is if you want to prohibit that there exists a sequence of Reidemeister moves between one, uh, between one diagram and another. Okay? So invariants are used to distinguish knots. <laughs> and uh, so this is, I think this is only available really for, for, uh, for Linux or, or Unix. Uh, and it requires TCL TK. So, and uh, it, it has some TCL TK main script, which invokes some C or C++ binaries extra by, uh, by, uh, <coughs> by co command line call. And uh, so th this, these components can be exchanged. And this is very useful. So uh, unfortunately it has, multiple and not very well documented bugs uh, uh, in the binaries maybe i will say something about that okay <coughs> which i which i try to fix and then also to make it more convenient for myself i have now my own so partly fixed and heavily altered version in which i have changed some of the functionality to to suit me personally better but of, okay this is my my own my own personal version so what uh, I, I should say also, maybe if we have time, but probably we will have no time. Uh, I can I can show show you uh, this this program how this uh, how this looks like. I should say there is a help button here. When you open the main window, there is a help button, and then in this help button you can find a lot of explanation about some things that I'm going to say. Also, I'm I say a little bit more than what is in the help. So uh, one thing that I should explain because uh, it is fundamental for working with this program is the, the Dauka Thistlethwaite notation. So I call this DT. Okay. And uh, this notation, you can also find it in the, in the, the explanation in the Hosty Thistlethwaite Weeks article that I showed you last time. So what is, what is this notation? This is a notation for representing a knot diagram. Okay, and the, the idea is the following. So assume that you have some diagram like that. You fix some point which is not on a crossing, somewhere outside of a crossing, and you fix a direction. And then you label, you label the crossing points. Every time you pass through a crossing, you label it with the next integer. So you start with one, then two, then three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
okay, you run along the curve and you get you get integers with up to two times the number of crossings. And exercise, you can always see that every crossing gets an even integer and an odd one. This is uh, basically because of the well, Jordan curve theorem or whatever. So every crossing gets an odd integer and an even one. And then you do the following. So let's say you, uh, I order the odd integers, one, three, five, seven, and write the corresponding even integer. So one uh, pairs with six, two pairs, two pairs with five, this means five pairs with two, three pairs with eight, and seven pairs with four. Okay, and then I get for one, three, five, seven, I get, get six, eight, two, four. Okay, and this, I need this sequence of, uh, of integers. And now, uh, how do I put the, the signs? The signs correspond to how the crossing is switched. And the convention is if you pass the even point from above, then the sign should be should be plus. And if you pass it from below, then the sign should be minus. So for example, when I we see when I run around here, uh, <coughs> I pass eight just before I come here from below. This means that the eight should have a minus. Okay? Well, for example, I, I, I pass six when I come here. So six comes from above and then it should have a plus. Okay, so you get an array of signed even non-zero integers. There are some permutation of the numbers two until two times the number of crossings. Okay, and this this is what is called the Dauka thistle thwaite notation. Okay, you, you see immediately that it depends on several choices. So it depends first on the choice of base point, and it also depends on the direction in which I run the curve. So this means uh, I uh, I have four times n different choices for a diagram of n crossings. Okay, so this is a little bit ambiguous, but the nice thing is, is if you have this sequence of even integers, then they will determine you a prime diagram up to uniquely up to mirroring. So if you have this uh, this area of even integers, there is a, at most one prime diagram which corresponds to this up to mirroring. Uh, so, uh, of course, there are, there are sequences which are not realizable, and there are sequences which correspond not to prime diagrams. Okay. This is very easy to see. So, the, this, this kind of sequences are not considered. So if, if you enter it into Notscape, usually Notscape will complain and say this does not represent a prime diagram or something like that. But this is a way to denote diagrams up to mirroring. <coughs> so, and uh, uh, obviously, if I change the sign of all the integers, then uh, then this is like changing all the crossing, and this is also mirroring. So uh, you can consider the notation up to changing the sign of all uh, all these integers. And uh, sometimes the convention is used, but this is not this is not consistent. That the sign of the first letter is uh, the first integer is positive if the corresponding crossing is positive. So for example, if you go here. Uh, one and six, this is actually a negative crossing. So locally, the orientation looks this one. Then you should write here. Then you, you actually you should say minus six, and then this should be plus. This should be minus. This should be plus. Okay. <coughs> but this is not. This is uh, this sign convention for the first crossing is only technical in some of the features of Notscape and is not maintained throughout. So you, in general, you must uh, when you work with these notations. You always have to consider this is up to mirror image, okay. so you must be careful a little bit. Uh, obviously, obviously, when when is the diagram alternating? Alternating means you're only up, down, up, down. This means all the even are up or all the even are down, which means that the diagram is alternating, if and if, if and only if all the signs are plus or all the signs are minus. Okay. So this convention for the first crossing does not extend to the other crossings. Okay, you must be careful. <coughs> also, there is a limit in okay in in the in the usage of diagrams uh, in Notscape, which is forty nine crossings. Uh, this can be lifted, but uh, okay. Uh, <coughs> anyway, Not Notscape is not really meant for very complicated computation. So. Usually, most most of the features will uh, will not work for if you try to input diagrams with more than forty nine crossings, and the format is 
if you have a diagram should always be written in this form you have at the end this this Dauka thistle trait code so this area of even integers the first thing you write is the number of crossings so in this case it will be four and then the second there is a second integer which is something like has the 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 function of a not identifier this can be different things uh, in the table it is simply the the order of the not of the table but you can you can put it to to something else <laughs> so uh okay <laughs> and then if you enter this kind of diagrams into this form then you can you can use this to calculate some something some some invariance or whatever uh, and I should say that historically alternating knots uh, are in a table are I li are listed before the non-alternating ones. Uh, so if you have uh, if you have tables uh, tables with like tables made by by these people, uh, always first come the alternating knots. So this means the alternating diagrams, and only then came the non-alternating ones. <coughs> so. Uh, <coughs> This is I, I have used this somehow to change the behavior of this uh, browsing function for the table. So there is a button which is called browse, uh, and this allows you to load or or to append into the the main window some some pieces of the knot table. So you can say I want alternating knots from this one to that one, and then if you if you click load, then uh, all these knots are loaded. Okay, and then you can start doing some some computations with them. <coughs> And there is uh, there are separate menus for alternating and non-alternating. So alternating not table and non-alternating not table, there are separate files. Okay, but I have changed the functionality a little bit, and I have put the, the non-alternating knots immediately after the alternating one. So <coughs> because otherwise, uh, otherwise. Uh, some functions return you say the knot is alternating, not is non-alternating. I simply change the 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 uh, the the order of the knot in the table so that the non-alternating are always after the alternating one. So then there is a file menu which allows you to do some kind of text operations with with the text window so to open, close, and etc. Then there is this file menu contains something which is called links. This is very useful. This is this is some this is some facility to draw to draw uh, to draw a link or or not in a window and then to to uh, to insert this into the text field. So I can draw my 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 uh, my not by some by some diagram in the in in this editor. And then I can say input to to not window, and then it it will input me the not with the correct Dauka thistle trait notation into the text, and then I can use this to calculate some some invariance or something. So so this is this is a very useful feature. You can use this not only for knots, you can use it also for for links and for some other uh, for other. You can also have strands loose, okay? So not closed. You have tangles and etc. But if you want to calculate something, you usually should input a not. <coughs> So uh, and then there is also a facility for entering braids. I explained last time what are braids. So if you enter a braid whose closure is a knot, it will uh, it will input into the text field the the diagram which is the closure of this braid, and then you can calculate something from that. Okay, and there is a little bug in it, but maybe I will talk about this later. So uh, and <laughs> then there is a very long menu which is called action, uh, and. Uh, under this menu, you can then do many things. So this is, allows you to do uh, to do various computations or, or manipulations with with the knots that you have entered into the text field. So one thing that I like to talk about a little bit in more detail is the uh, the the locate feature. So this this comes first. And now what what does the locate do? Okay, so the locate the goal of this locate is if you have some diagram in the text window to tell you which of which knot is this diagram. This is very useful. So I input some diagram, want to know what is the what is the knot of this diagram. Uh, and so it's, it, it tells you which knot in the, in the table uh, it is, or since the table considers only prime knots, it can be a connected sum. So then, then it says, 
it is a connected sum of this not in the table and that not in the table or something like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, it works so far without bugs, certainly if the initial diagram has less than equal to 16 crossings. Okay. So it can, it will, it should always correctly identify your knots uh, which you input by diagram of at most 16 crossings so because 16 crossings are the is the range of the table which is available in the program so <laughs> up to 16 crossings uh, it should tell you uh, which which knot it is so and uh, i again changed this in the original version that you can download on this Ways website it, it it puts this a and n identifiers to alternating non alternating i changed this because i did not like uh, I did not like I did not like that. So it will simply input output me the uh, output me the knot as it is in the table. Okay. Um, and also another thing that I have done is I have uh, I don't know whether I have written this here. I have also uh, renumbered uh, <coughs> renumbered the knots uh, up to ten crossings <laughs> because uh, I wanted to use the the tables in in Rawson's book. Okay. So you must be careful if you have diagrams with less than or ten, less than 11 crossings, so 10 or less, this numbering in Notscape is different from the one in Rawson's book, which is used by almost everybody else. And then uh, there is some way to recode, but I, uh, I recoded this so that it does it automatically. Okay. But this is not in the version which you can get on this website. So you must be careful <laughs> with that. Okay. Uh, Okay, so this location w w should work always when uh, you, you start with diagrams of at most 16 crossings. So what happen? happens if you have diagram with more than 16 crossings, uh, so at least 17 crossings? Uh, then in principle, what it should do is, if you cannot identify the knot in the table, it will uh, give you some other diagram uh, with, a, with a message best reduction available. Okay, this means it tries to reduce it, and it, it reduces it un until something, but it cannot reduce it until uh, an entry in the table. So it simply uh, outputs what it, what is it reduced it to. Okay, but the problem is, and I uh, okay, I should warn here that this uh, in more than 17 or more crossings, this feature has some bugs. Okay, so obviously, when you want to reduce the diagram, all these all these transformations should not change the knot type. I mean, if you input a one diagram and you want to locate it, you want output a diagram of the same knot. Okay, but <coughs> unfortunately, this uh, this tool has some bugs and uh, uh, it, it sometimes changes the knot type, so it outputs you a diagram of a different knot. So you must be a little bit careful with that. Uh, uh, so, how does this work? So. Uh, Okay, what is the implementation of that of that feature? So uh, there is there is a binary which which I which is called not find dot c, and the capacity of this this binary is to apply moves on the diagram you like to locate. So uh, I said right, you can apply Rydermeister moves. Okay, there is nothing wrong with that. But the problem is that uh, these Rydermeister moves can augment a number of crossings. And then I said that there are better, there are other more complex moves which are composed of right mice to move like this flip, okay, which do not augment the number of crossings. And this is what is implemented uh, in in this in this not find .c. So it has a certain repertoire of of moves. I think all of these moves do not augment the number of crossings. This means uh, in, in this way you, you do not risk. Uh, being in an infinite space, okay. So <coughs> uh, you you have only a finite number of possible diagrams, okay. So for example, uh, it, it certainly has the flip, and then there are a few other moves. The, for example, there is the perku move, uh, which which it uses. I explained, I think I said last time. So the perku move is also in this hosted this way tweaks article. Uh, this move is. It has the property that it changes the number of positive or negative crossings without changing the number of, of crossings. Okay. And uh, th this move was discovered to identify two knots in the table which were thought to be in equivalent. Okay. 
So uh, then this now this pair is now called the, called the Perko pair. Uh, so the, the the move not only works not only for the Perko pair; it works for more in more complicated cases. It is explained in this article. I don't want to draw this now. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so the Perko move is there, and then there are some instances of the pass move. Okay, so what is the pass move? The pass moves look something like this. You have a disk with something going in on the left and something going out on, on the right, and you have a string which passes first on the left, and you can move it to the right. Okay. Uh, and uh, the drawing is a little bit different depending on whether the number of strands on the left uh, plus the number of strands on the right is even or odd. So when it is even, then it is simpler and you simply have this uh, goes to that. But if it is odd, then you ha the string which goes from left to right is actually connected to the disk. Okay, and the reason is, if, you, if I draw something like this, this means you have a certain number of strands in the disk. And of course, this sh should be equal here and here. Okay, uh, but if you have strands, so the strands do not bifurcate and they do not end inside the disk. So every st string which enters, it also goes out. This means for every string there are there are two ends, and this means the number of ends of strings in total must be even. And if k plus l is odd, then you need one more, and then this must be the string which is connected to, okay, to this piece which you move from left to the right. Okay. This is why for k plus l odd, the this this pass move will look like that, and for k plus l even you can draw it this way. Okay. And now, if in order not to argument the crossing number, you of course assume that L is less than or equal to K. Okay. And this this functionality, this program has certain instances of this move programmed. Okay. I should say, maybe I should say I have my own my own implementation for, for general K and L and I I do not know exactly what are the moves in this this program, but I can generate more diagrams with my pass with a general pass move than I can do with, with this one. So this means uh, it probably has only some specific instances for specific K and L, like two or two, one or something like that. Okay. <coughs> uh, so now, uh, what does this do then? Okay, so it, it has first some repertoire of moves, which I do not know exactly what they are, but uh, I, I suspo suppose that these, these basic moves are there. Uh, and then, when you are given a diagram, it starts uh, re, uh, iteratively seeking for applicable moves. Okay, so this means, let's say I'm, uh, I, I draw this a diagram as a dot and an arrow as a move. So I start in this diagram and I can apply three different moves. When I apply the first move I land here, then it seeks again for other applicable moves and then you can apply moves and etc. Okay, so uh, you get some kind of a graph, okay, you, can, you get a kind of a graph. Uh, where every arrow means I apply a move from this diagram to this diagram. Okay. And now, obviously, this is not loop free. Okay. I mean, of course, when you apply a move in this way, you can immediately go back. But uh, you can, there are more complicated loops. So you can, you can move from here to here and then apply some move and you land somewhere there. Okay. So uh, this means whenever you reach a diagram, uh, you have to maintain some kind of a database of the diagrams that you have obtained, and uh, you you must uh, make sure to avoid cycle, okay? Because uh, if you have a cycle, then you simply run into uh, run into an infinite loop, and uh, this never finishes. Okay? So uh, so you w whenever you reach a diagram, you have to check in the database is this the diagram which I previously considered, and if it is, then I simply throw it out and uh, throw it out and go back. Uh, so this is how uh, okay now you get a certain certain tree of diagrams which you uh, which you can generate from from uh, from a given diagram and at the end you land at some kind of a minimal okay among all these diagrams that you checked there is one which is minimal according to some ordering so basically it is the lexicographic order of the of the Dalkatis operate notation and this is the one which is output okay so now uh, this is not the whole story, okay? Because uh, uh, <coughs> uh, the dagger, the, the this will also this tool will also stop when it finds a connected sum. So sometimes it can uh, encounter a diagram which looks like that, okay, which which looks like uh, <coughs> which looks like this, okay? And then it will simply give me the two factors, 
okay? And then it will exit. And then <coughs> what, what I have to do is I have to reduce every factor by itself. So let's say I, I start with a diagram D. It finds uh, it has a connected sum D1, connected sum D2. Then I reduce D1, let's say I get the R0. I reduce D2 to some other connected sum. Then I reduce D3 to some diagram of, of some prime knot, D4 to another connected sum, and then I re continue reducing until I, I get prime knots or unknots. Okay, and uh, connected sum with unknots doesn't matter. So unknot connected sum something is you can simply remove it. Okay, and in this case you would get K3 connected sum with K4 connected sum or, or with K5 connected sum with K6 uh, as I have drawn. And this is what it will report. Okay. And now you must be careful. As I said, uh, Notscape does not distinguish between a diagram and its mirror image. Okay. So this means, for example, uh, if I uh, if I take two trefoils this way, it will give it will give me exactly the same output as if I take two trefoils, uh, one one this way and one the other way. So here is the trefoil with itself, and it is the trefoil with its mirror image. Okay. And this. Knots are, uh, if you t build the connected sum in this way, these knots are inequivalent even up to mirror image, but they will be reported in the same way if you use this, uh, uh, this, uh, this tool. Okay. <coughs> and uh, so, uh, okay, so this oh, is, this is one case. thing. Yes, oh. are you asking something? Oh. Okay. <coughs> so uh, this, is, this is one thing that, uh, that this does. Now, uh, th there's obvious problem. So whenever you reduce in this way, you may land at the local minimum, but not at the global one. Okay. So uh, this means uh, they must, they may be a, a, a smaller diagram or smaller crossing number or smaller in lexicographic order, okay? but you do not get to this diagram because you went here and then you landed in some local minimum. This is still bigger than that, but uh, Okay, I, there is no way to get from here to here without going backwards. Okay. So this this can happen. Sometimes you can have uh, you can this uh, this diagram may even have more crossings than that one. Okay, so this can happen. And now uh, uh, how how can how can you solve that? Okay. There are not the not find does not have the moves to go from here to there. Okay, and the problem is resolved by uh, an explicitly compiling a list of duplications. So first you apply not find, and when you get the, the, di the diagram which is output by not find, then you look it up into a list of duplications and say, if I land it here, okay, I have to check in the table whether this does not belong to some other diagram which is smaller. Okay? Uh, so and then you, you have to look this up in this list of duplications, and then if I find that I'm here, then I have to report that one. Okay? This has to be explicitly checked, and th there is an explicit list, and now you see of course, when crossing number increases, these duplications will get very many. Okay. Uh, so the, the list of duplications is available only up to 16 crossings. So when D prime has at most 16 crossings, there will be a complete list of duplications to bring it to this other diagram, <laughs> but not for more. Okay. So there is no, uh, for, for more than 16 crossings, there is no duplication list. Okay. <coughs> uh, and as I said, uh, one of the basic one of the problems with this uh, these two is that there is a bug which changes the knot type. If you start with more than sixteen crossing, it sometimes reports your diagram of the uh, of another knot. And one thing, okay, I mean, <coughs> if I would like to to have some students uh, any time later to work with, okay, one thing that uh, that would be very helpful to do is to to uh, to fix this bug, which means. Okay, so now this is a, a, a little bit non-trivial project. So first we have to find out what are the moves because, uh, okay, I have the code, but this is not very well documented, so I cannot see what are the moves. To find out what are the moves, to fix it or to write an entirely new program, okay, which implements these moves and uh, does, not, does not have this problem. <coughs> so, uh, okay, uh, this is one basic, one basic, uh, one basic uh, uh, research question which I would have okay, concerning uh, fixing fixing the error in this uh, in this uh, in this tool. There are also some other problems, but uh, okay, uh, let me not talk too much about that. Uh, I uh, to finish with okay, because I don't have enough time. Let me mention only two more things. So the one thing that uh, one other thing that you can do, which is 
very nice is you can, there is a draw not functionality. So this means if you are given a diagram, it will draw you the diagram in the plane. Okay. Uh, <coughs> and there is, there is something which is, which is a symmetry group. So symmetry groups means uh, some homeomorphisms of the complement which, uh, which preserve the complement. So for example, if you have something like, like say you have the trefoil, then you can rotate it by two pi over three and you get the same thing. Okay. And so this is, this is a symmetry of the trefoil. And uh, the symmetry is regarded up to both reversal of orientation of the knot and of the mirror image. So if you can turn the complement into itself with the opposite orientation, this is still regarded as a symmetry. Okay. And now uh, uh, this, this leads them to the, the question which I discussed above, or let's say mentioned above, is if you have a, a knot, how do you know now which of these, the inverse, the mirror image, and the inverse of the mirror image, which of them are equivalent? And uh, the program can mostly report this using some hyperbolic uh, symmetry information. So what, what are possibilities? Okay. One possibility is that all of them are distinct. Okay. This, this happens for some, some non-crossing knot. If you, uh, if you take the trefoil, okay, what happens for the trefoil is that this is invertible. So k is the same as minus k. This is how I draw here a line to identify them. But if, if k is equal to minus k, then also the mirror image of k is equal to the mirror image of minus k. Okay, this means this and this are identified, and uh, okay, and this this uh, this is what is an invertible knot. Okay, and then you have you can have identification. You can have over cross. This is equal to that, and that to that. This is the famous knot eight seventeen. Okay, you can have something like this, and you can have also one where all of them are equal. So this is what is uh, report. This is called fully amphicaro. Amphicaro means it is uh, you can turn it into its mirror image, but Plus or minus means whether uh, whether you can turn it into its mirror image with the with the same orientation or with the opposite orientation of the knot. Okay, and now there there are there are knots which are both plus and minus, and uh, uh, there are some which are simultaneously both. For example, the I said the figure eight knots okay, has this property that all of these all of these four are the same. So the identification is like that, and this is something that can be reported by uh, by by the the <coughs> by the program. Okay. So uh, <coughs> if the knot is hyperbolic, I don't know want now to discuss what it means that the knot is hyperbolic, but most knots are hyperbolic. And for most knots, you can use this feature to identify now what, of, what, is, what is what. And uh, there is more, but uh, I think uh, I better stop here. We will leave the, the rest of the, the content maybe for, for, for the next talk. Uh,